episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, again to another episode of our show uh, with another fascinating guest who is uh, endeavoring to create a better tomorrow for all of us. And we are going to be uh, journeying back to the topic of uh, aging and longevity biotechnology. Uh, we are going to be continuing, as we say, on our virtual around the world road trip uh, headed towards uh, St. Petersburg, Russia today uh, to meet with the very multi-talented uh, Ariel Feinerman, who uh, is the chief science officer at a company called Intraclear Biologics, uh, which is a a new generation of bioengineering company with a focus of putting aging under medical control. Uh, Ariel began his career, uh, interestingly, as an entomologist uh, back in 2003, uh, studying at uh, Kaliningrad State Technical University in the area of aquatic biosciences, aquaculture, uh, engaged in the study of aquatic insects, uh, in 2006, he, uh, he turned his interest to uh, studying programming and for many years worked as a software engineer. Uh, in 2014, uh, in rolling in the physics department at St. Petersburg State University, he began to get more involved in the, in the biology and biotech lab space, uh, participating in a lot of work there in the area of PCR and genetic engineering. Uh, screening yeast genomes and a variety of other activities and ultimately phys ended up with a, a degree in uh, physics, uh, became quite interested in the rejuvenation biotechnology sector and is uh, in addition to working in it and consulting for it has also uh, uh, been involved as an, as strongly in its advocacy uh, and spreading the word about what's happening in this space. So uh, looking forward to having a great conversation. Uh, Ariel Feynman, thank you for uh, taking the time to come talk today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how are all? Yeah, so uh, it's good having you. Uh, I have uh, I felt like I've known you for many years now from the uh, Longevity Biotech Social uh, Networks, but uh, I'd love to start off as we typically do, just by giving things over to you for a little bit to talk about yourself. Uh, a little bit uh, about more about your background and how uh, after having these wide ranging interests in entomology and computer programming and physics and so forth that uh, you developed a passion for rejuvenation biotechnology. Um, yeah, I have uh, many interests in my life. Uh, some of them are um, uh, from the past, uh, some of them are, um, I'm still uh, uh, interested in them. Uh, for example, I like photography, I like uh, writing, I like um, programming. Now I'm not uh, um, a professional programmer anymore, at least uh, for now. <laughs> Uh, but I'm still interested in uh, programming algorithms, uh, in uh, various uh, program architecture, and uh, especially because I study physics now, uh, I'm interested in quantum uh, algorithms, in quantum computing, uh, in quantum mechanics. Uh, it's all very interesting, and even though this is um, uh, not uh, applicable in general sense to the uh, rejuvenation by technology now, but it uh, never, uh, of course will be applicable in, uh, within the next 10, uh, 15 years. Um, this emerging technology is slowly, painfully, but uh, steady um, and uh, Um, slowly uh, but uh, steady uh, uh, make uh, uh, progress and uh, such companies like IBM, uh, Intel, they 
promise that within the next 10, 15 years, um, uh, practical quantum computers will be within our reach. What, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, you, uh, you have this wide range of interests. Um, and I, you know, I, I've virtually met you in the, in the social uh, network area of longevity biotech. Um, you know, when you, I go out there and I, uh, I, I see a variety of different types of folks from the people that, um, you know, like to post scientific articles all the time about the space to the types of people that say, you know, oh, Elon Musk will save us, Jeff Bezos will save us. Uh, you took a little different path and you took the opportunity to, well, as we say, put your money uh, down and set up a company. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, what led you to forming Intraclear Biologics, uh, a little bit about where the company is located. I know it's uh, kind of uh, can, you know, distributed amongst Russia and Estonia and other areas. Uh, talk a little bit about that, what was behind the company being set up, and talk a little bit about the team that you put together, both the folks that are going to be working on what you're going to be doing, and we'll get into that in a bit, uh, but also your advisors behind it. Um, you know, there are um, many questions, uh, but I will ask, uh, I will try to ask all of them from the beginning. Take and time. make and make a few notes. Uh, what I uh, have to uh, say publicly uh, for some time is that I don't uh, like the word longevity very much. I will uh, explain in a few words why. Okay. Uh, the word longevity is uh, the word that uh, make. Um, us things about um, uh, long uh, long life yeah but uh, it don't precisely emphasize uh, the health so people uh, so when uh, for, for example someone says about um, person who lived to 118 years you no, this Japanese, uh, this uh, Japanese person uh, who made the headlines. Um, here, of course, an example of uh, longevity, but uh, definitely not the health longevity in right. the sense that we all uh, wish to um, achieve. Uh, so I uh, maybe I don't. Uh, I won't be original, but I would like to um, uh, like to uh, introduce the uh, such a word like healthivity. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, even though it uh, sounds slightly wild, I think it's uh, emphasize the health mm -hmm. and. Uh, so our mind goal is not just live longer, uh, but uh, live a uh, healthy life. Um, and uh, longevity is uh, just a consequence of uh, healthivity. So when we are healthy, not healthy on your age, <laughs> right. like um, our physicians very politely talk, um, but uh, uh, real uh, health. Mm -hmm. Real health, uh, I mean by, uh, when I say real health, I mean uh, health at uh, the age of 20, 25 a person, yeah, year old person. Yeah, that is a real health and uh, what we try to achieve is real health. And if people uh, feel, look, and uh, on the structural level uh, is uh, like uh, uh, 20 or 25 years old, then uh, on the functional level, he will be also 20, 25 years old because function is uh, dependent on, on the structure. 
our function, our physiology is uh, dependent on our uh, on structure of our cellular on, and molecular level. And if a person um, is biologically 20 or 25 years old, and uh, <clears throat> it uh, it means that uh, he or she um, uh, has uh, so much years uh, as a real chronologically 20 or 25 years old person. Uh, that mean uh, that that uh, means that um, uh, health uh, inevitably lead to a long life. Yeah, and uh, this was a uh, small, small map. Uh, then I, uh, what you say about our company? Yeah, uh, what, uh, what to, uh, why I uh, found this company with our business is uh, because uh, uh, several years ago we. Uh, have made a um, uh, set of uh, lectures, a uh, set of uh, audio lectures um, with my friend, a physician, Alexander Morozov, uh, about uh, sense conception, about uh, rejuvenation by technology. Mm -hmm. um, we have made uh, seven uh, lectures, uh, eight lectures, uh, first as introduction and then seven lectures uh, for each, uh, each lecture for uh, each uh, type of damage from sense uh, conception. And then we uh, make uh, several so-called intermediates uh, about uh, emerging technologies uh, like <clears throat> stem cells, like uh, uh, rejuvenation immune system, and, and uh, um, about uh, social, economical, and political consequences of uh, defeating aging. Mm -hmm. uh, they are all in Russian, and uh, I plan to make uh, them in English in the near future. Uh, so I think it will be a very interesting project. Uh, and when we uh, make it, uh, uh, we realize that uh, there is no company that, uh, or even research group, that um, investigates the lipofusin is a type of intracellular damage. Yep. Lipofusin is. Uh, very interesting in the sense that it is very conservative during uh, evolution tree. Uh, uh, there is in yeast, in uh, lobsters, in uh, humans. Uh, of course, this is slightly different lipofusin, but uh, the conception of lipofusin is the same. So when this is some um, cannot digest uh, the um, virus uh, pro proteins, uh, lipids, um, uh, virus, uh, other um, the pieces of cellular membranes, and uh, they are all glued together with um, cross links. And uh, one of the catalysts of that is uh, heavy metal ions. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, forms such a granules um, of yellow, bright yellow color. Uh, if you look at, uh, for example, our site, we uh, have uh, uh, we, we started a project of uh, to catalog all uh, lipofuscin in various tissues. Unfortunately, uh, this is uh, this project is now uh, 
progressed not very well because of the situation in Belarus political sure. crisis. Uh, because our lab, uh, which investigates this, this project, uh, places uh, placed in uh, in Minsk, uh, but we hope we will uh, restart that project very soon uh, in the other country, uh, maybe in Russia, maybe in Ukraine. Uh, I will show you how Lipovacin is uh, looks like. Please. The more interesting thing is that there it is our side. Yeah, this is a microphotography of the uh, human heart muscle. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who is only 56 years old. And uh, you can see um, this is a cardiomyositis. Uh, this is a heart um, muscle cells. And uh, this is the nucleus in uh, violet. And lipofusin is a uh, brown yellow around the nucleus in the place where um, the plasmatic reticulum has to be placed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this is very interesting microphotograph of the uh, human seminal vesicles. Right. This man only 55 years old, and as you can see, this uh, a lot of lipovacin. Oh, yeah. no, not uh, not a little, but just a lot of lipovacin. This uh, this 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 all this is lipovacin. This very interesting because um, uh, these cells uh, have to be um, frequently uh, repeated, but uh, nevertheless um, they accumulate a lot of lipofacin, and uh, maybe this uh, somehow affect the uh, reproductive function. We don't know yet. We don't know. Uh, we don't. Uh, we haven't found uh, any um, uh, research in literature, so this may be the case. Um, this is about uh, oxidized cholesterol, which mm -hmm. is uh, not in our focus now, but we uh, think about that. Okay. I. Uh, now I stop it. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, this my friend, uh, realized that uh, no one works on lipofusin. And then we started to think about how to, uh, how to begin that project on lipofusin. Firstly, we uh, tried to organize uh, um, intracranial biologics initiative. Uh, non-commercial organization uh, to um, uh, accumulate uh, funds for research in that area, but it uh, wouldn't very, uh, it won't, it, um, it did uh, not very successful. And uh, um, we, then we uh, realized that uh, we need uh, our company and uh, we need uh, investors who will pay for that research because even structure of lipofacin is not investigated very well. Mm -hmm. uh, lipofacin is uh, uh, researched from the uh, fifty uh, um, from the fifties of the uh, twenty century. But without uh, any uh, success um, in the sense of uh, their structure or their uh, even their uh, uh, even um, their structure is is not uh, known uh, on the level that we need now. Uh, the issue is that uh, lipofacin is very complex uh, 
uh, compound and uh, is uh, maybe different in the different tissues of the same organism. This, uh, I say maybe because even that question isn't researched very well. Mm. Um, I know the work uh, where Lipofusin uh, was researched in mice and uh, researchers sh uh, show that uh, uh, Lipofusin in different tissues uh, consists of uh, the same um, uh, building blocks, uh, but in uh, different uh, ratio of these building blocks. Mm -hmm. Maybe this uh, is uh, maybe for people is uh, true as well, but maybe not. And we have to research this uh, question. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting mix <laughs> of stuff, uh, and it's it's just interesting as you're saying that we've uh, we've known about it for. A few decades, but it's really unexplored. So it's definitely a uh, an area that uh, is ripe for further exploration. I, I you know, I was I was wondering because you know, I, in in your background, you know, you uh, you worked on um, the phospholipids uh, when you were doing your physics study, but you also worked uh, with insects. And I remember reading, um, I think it was an interview with. With you and Aubrey de Grey at one point, and you were talking, you know, it was you know, obviously the SENS focus has been on some of these bacterial enzymes as a possibility. I think you once brought up uh, the topic of of insects, which are pretty good at digesting stuff, uh, and they, you know, their saliva and, and and so forth secrete all sorts of fascinating things that are good at breaking stuff down from plastic to <laughs> all sorts of other things. Have you? Uh, Obviously, it's early on in the process, but have you given any further thought to this concept of interesting enzymes or biomolecules from sort of the insect kingdom that may be useful in your screens one day for breaking this stuff apart? Yeah, mm, uh, while insects uh, th uh, themselves uh, do not uh, um, have uh, needed en enzymes, uh, but uh, their commensal bacteria mm -hmm. definitely uh, ha have uh, this enzyme, so um, they are a very nice place to, uh, to look for. Uh, but now consensus is that uh, soil and uh, ocean water bacteria mm -hmm. are more uh, diverse in um, various abilities to digest nearly everything. Uh, so it's not the problem to uh, find such an enzyme because uh, there is definitely uh, sure. exists such a bacteria because uh, do you uh, see around us the Lipofusin uh, fossils. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I can't. Uh, so someone eat Lipofusin from right. the dead bodies. Yeah. So uh, definitely there is such bacteria, and uh, what we need to is just to uh, find them. And yeah. uh, many uh, people from the um, community, from the short community thinks that uh, now um, we are able to uh, find enzymes to um, uh, digest nearly everything within uh, only one year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, only one question is who will pay for that? This is uh, this it's is the big uh, question everywhere, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there are not so much people who would like to pay for that, and uh, that uh, means uh, that uh, work that may be done just in one year, uh, maybe will be done in four, five, or maybe 10 years if no one uh, uh, will pay for, for that work. Mm. 
But I try to be optimistic because uh, now um, there are s several, at least three successful cases uh, when people uh, find such uh, bacteria, such an enzymes. This is a lizoclear company by Kelsimudi, you know that. Yep. Uh, then, of course, uh, one of my favorite rebel pharmaceuticals, uh, which uh, crack um, uh, Ducazepan, uh, intra, um, intra uh, protein um, uh, uh, cross links, protein cross links, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, stiffen our intracellular matrix. Right. Uh, this is interesting in uh, several ways. Uh, at least uh, we know that it is a cause of the wrinkles. So uh, when this company um, will uh, give uh, what they uh, do to the clinical market, we at least uh, will be able to get rid of uh, wrinkles. <laughs> this, will be, this will be another world. And uh, of course, uh, less, uh, less known, but much more um, important uh, thing is that uh, cross links are stiffen our vessels mm -hmm. uh, and uh, lead to um, strokes, lead to cardiovascular diseases. And uh, of course, uh, this is much more important, uh, the world free of uh, cardiovascular diseases, at least, at least half of that. The other half is uh, oxidized cholesterol, seven kata cholesterol. But uh, another half of that is uh, uh, glucosapyrin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I spoke with Aubrey de Grey in an interview in uh, 2019, he had said that uh, human clinical trials of glucosapyrin breakers uh, may be um, as uh, close as uh, two or three years from now. So this is uh, very in a very uh, changing world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Yes. You know, um, as you're talking at the beginning, uh, your your group is uh, distributed. You know, you're in in Russia right now. You registered uh, the company in uh, Estonia. You have, I think, some folks in uh, in Belarus. Um, is the is the future as it becomes as you ultimately are successful in raising more money and and doing more of these uh, sort of early uh, experiments is estonia going to be your i know estonia is a very hot area for tech of all sorts nowadays it's one of those shining locations um is that where you envision sort of the uh more of the the, the less virtual part of intraclear biologics existing or do you plan to be somewhat more virtual for the next couple of years um yeah i i I will say a few words about um, the early days of our company. Um, we, uh, we are relatively lucky in the sense that uh, we uh, very quickly established the company and um, one of our partners, um, uh, one of our founders uh, uh, pay for it some small but very important money for uh, initial research and for registering company for wireless services uh, for our company and uh, he is still with us so we can leave now uh, but of course this very small money um, uh, in the sense of investing but uh, without them we uh, wouldn't uh, survive and uh, we um, uh, initially uh, we have uh, several uh, co-founders uh, who try to who think it about investing in our company but they quickly 
live as uh, because it is uh, unconventional in there I they were uh, all Russians and in, in Russia uh, biotechnology isn't uh, something uh, that people think they have to invest in uh, they they still uh, don't know what to do with biotechnology yeah um, and the issue is uh, that um, I will, I will, I will give you an example of. In uh, people are investors are spoiled by um, uh, web web market by programming market, because uh, in in um, web market investor can hire a few students for marginal sal salary, and they will. Uh, write uh, a new Instagram for them for for them in a few months right. uh, for nearly zero dollars not exactly zero but nearly zero I, I get it <laughs> uh, unfortunately unfortunately I don't know I think unfortunately this uh, don't work in biotechnology, in bioengineering, nope. <laughs> in rege rege regenerative medicine. This doesn't work. Uh, you need to invest very hugely uh, to technology uh, to uh, to invent something new, to uh, make uh, new therapy, to bring it uh, that therapy to the clinical market. It's another level of uh, money. It's another level of um, uh, responsibility, another level of uh, involvement investor in the process uh, of the ma making company. So um, few people uh, even even in uh, europe or usa uh, not so many people comparing to other investors invest in uh, biomedical engineering in biotechnology especially in the rejuvenation biotechnology yeah. i will i will say another thing that uh, may uh, seems controversial but i uh, think that it is true that in my opinion, uh, a small molecular approach is uh, slowly dying. Dying. Um, no, nothing and, controversial uh, there. I, 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 I 100 percent agree with you. I. <laughs> we keep going. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, that small molecular approach is slowly dying because uh, small molecules, uh, um, comparing to so-called biologics. Of yeah. big molecules, um, so what we call the re rejuvenation by technology, uh, have so many, uh, so many drawbacks, so many um, side effects, uh, um, side effects, uh, not only in uh, in. Uh, the sense of medicine, but uh, in general sense, uh, in the uh, economical sense, in um, various other senses. For example, um, small molecules uh, to uh, make uh, such a, how they work. They work usually by interfering with metabolism. Yeah. Uh, they have a target. Uh, they have a uh, that target need to be invest, uh, investigated very carefully, uh, then uh, very sophisticated clinical trials in animals, in, in the humans, uh, because these uh, small molecules are foreign to our organism. And they have such thing as uh, half-life, they, uh, for example, such, some of them are, uh, uh, some of them are uh, uh, metabolize in our liver, some of them in our kidneys, some mm -hmm. of them uh, do not metabolize in our organism at all. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, what about uh, biologics? They, uh, they consist of uh, the same parts that the rest of our body. 
For example, gene therapy. What is gene therapy? For example, this is a virus, uh, as a recall, uh, or uh, lipid nanoparticles. Um, uh, then uh, another part is uh, informational. Uh, this is a matrix uh, RNA or DNA. Uh, so uh, all of them are uh, consist of the same part that our body lipids. Uh, uh, amino acids and uh, so on, uh, proteins. So uh, they, when they uh, have done their work, they will just uh, disappear from our organism without any uh, problems. Mm -hmm. When uh, matrix RNA uh, works uh, when uh, protein or enzyme synthesize it from uh, this matrix RNA, uh, then uh, what, uh, what uh, then uh, will uh, be, um, what uh, then will happen? Um, just uh, cellular machinery will uh, uh, digest it mm -hmm. and uh, Without uh, without any problems, we do not. Uh, they don't uh, toxic for liver. They, they don't toxic for kidney. That's that's very important. And yeah. uh, and uh, even more important that they uh, uh, they act don't by interfere with metabolism. But by uh, changing uh, the, but by uh, removing the damage that uh, uh, accumulates uh, during our life, and uh, in that sense, they are metabol uh, met uh, metabolic inert. They are, do not change our metabolism. They do not uh, interfere with metabolism. And they just remove uh, damage. For example, we can compare two uh, types of uh, therapy for lowering uh, arterial pressure, systolic pressure. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can compare the uh, small molecules that uh, uh, block calcium channels, uh, and uh, we can compare uh, the uh, because the breakers molecules mm -hmm. uh, enzymes when uh, when we say about uh, there are uh, so much uh, so much uh, so many uh, small molecules that lower arterial pressure uh, but what they do they they some of them are uh, relax the um, uh, smooth muscles of uh, arterial walls. Mm -hmm. Arterials uh, begin more uh, spreading and uh, they uh, um, so the pressure is lowering. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the cause of the, the this uh, high pressure is uh, arterial stiffening by glucosapium. So even where, so these small molecules work um, only for a short period of time. When you uh, get it, uh, they uh, work in some sense, uh, uh, but then uh, the effect is uh, punishes and uh, your uh, arterial pressure is uh, high again. Yep. And, more and more important that uh, because they don't remove the cause of this high arterial pressure, uh, and because the pound is still accumulates, 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 um, then uh, one one day they stop to work yep. because because uh, because arterial is so stiffening that their muscles cannot relax anymore. Uh, 
and uh, glucosapine breakers uh, work in uh, completely another way. They remove these cross links and arterial uh, muscles can uh, relax as in a young person. And you need, uh, you need uh, such a therapy only in uh, uh, three or five years uh, because glucosapine accum accumulates very slowly. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost uh, the same is applicable to lipofacin, uh, which we work on. Lipofacin is, um, as we said before, intracellular junk. And uh, some may ask, uh, who guess, why we uh, so concerned about lipofacin? Uh, uh, we are concerned about it because it uh, uh, now uh, uh, now uh, we know from uh, many papers that is a neurotoxic that uh, lipofacin is uh, uh, involved in uh, neurodegeneration. Uh, there is uh, many articles that prove that uh, lipofacin is uh, in cell. Um, High, high volume uh, lipofacin uh, get from cell um, uh, high uh, volume of the cell space mm -hmm. and uh, up to 30% of the internal uh, intra uh, cell space and uh, even mechanically uh, not just chemically but even mechanically uh, do not uh, make cell uh, uh, feel well. <laughs> right. So, what about? Uh, uh, and of course, chemically, it just poisons cell because it uh, consists of uh, because it uh, have in uh, has uh, because it has. Um, uh, high amount of heavy metal ions, mm -hmm. like a mercury, uh, like a lead, like ferrum. So, uh, and uh, lipofacin is uh, mainly accumulated in uh, post-methodic cells, such as neurons, such as heart muscle, such as uh, other muscles. Um, and uh, interesting thing that, for example, do you know that human heart accumulates uh, approximately one gram of uh, lipofacin each year. So, uh, so 70 years old person uh, have uh, at least has at least uh, five gram of lipofacin in in uh, his or her heart. And that. So, so it's it's a big amount. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... so lipofacin is very important, and uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, few people uh, look at, at it. Well, it's a um, it's clearly an important target, and so uh, I think you're on the right uh, pathway with with your thinking um, because it is, as you point out, quite. Uh, distributed uh, around everything that makes us uh, alive. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, uh, along, along these lines, um, Ariel, the, as mentioned at the beginning, you, um, you know, aside from being um, involved in, in IntraClear, you have also been very active on the advocacy front uh, for this space, you know, uh, the last several years. Um, I know you were saying your, your, your point about small chemical drugs was controversial, but I wanted to ask you a slightly different controversial question and, and just, you know, take your time with it. Uh, what, what, is, what is your feeling about the current state of um, longevity uh, aging biotech ecosystem in general around the world do you feel that we um we support each other enough do you feel that there's too much uh 
competition going on in the social sphere. You know, Aubrey de Grey is right. No, David Sinclair is right. Uh, no, Jeff Bezos is right. Uh, what's your feel for um, sort of the general uh, advocacy environment uh, that's out there? Do you think there's too much going on? Do you think there's not enough? Uh, give me your just a couple minutes of your feelings about the whole thing. Um, can you please uh, more specify your question? Um, uh, what what environment you you ask for? Uh, medical medical environment. More more about you know. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, if I if, if you and I were just working in um, uh, cancer research right now, what, uh, what, uh... I say oncology. Oh, you and okay, I, you, okay. you and you and I wouldn't be arguing in Facebook constantly about whether Ariel Finerman, Finerman had the right approach or whether Ira Pastor had the right approach or whether this reason you would just be doing oncology research. I'm just interested in how you feel that because I see a lot, you know, I've watched <laughs> the social media around this, people discussing and arguing for years now. I just wonder how much of it is beneficial <laughs> versus everybody just doing what you're doing. Let's get to work and try to do this <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, every time Aubrey de Grey says something, there's people that say, yeah, that's great. And then there's people that argue and, 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 and it goes on and on. Uh, I was just, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, how you felt sort of the general public uh, ecosystem around it was uh, was being handled, was evolving in the right way or not. Because um, um, you write a lot about stuff. Uh, do you mean that um, the, uh, this gap between the lab research and, and the clinic uh, where... Uh, that uh, in the lab we have uh, astonishing, uh, wonderful uh, results, and in clinic people still die. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, uh, this uh, this is uh, the case. You're right. Uh, and but I think is not because uh, people in the uh, not because things in the lab don't uh, work or don't work for people. Um, but because uh, we uh, we have this gap, I think because of the um, very very uh, strong medical regulation, uh, and uh, one thing and another thing is uh, because tr translational medicine is um, uh, is uh, funded very poorly. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, do you know what uh, budget of uh, translational research, translational medical research in the USA mm -hmm. in, in say, uh, 15 or 17 years? About 10 million dollars, uh, two times more than uh, budget of the Sense Research Foundation only. Yeah. While, while uh, National Institutes of Health uh, have at least uh, uh, 30 uh, billion dollars yep. and I uh, wish to ask where is where is this billion dollars <laughs> don't ask why, the questions <laughs> yeah why why they uh, why they uh, have so much money and so uh, so uh, less practical uh, research uh, that can be applied to sick people I think the problem is uh, because uh, uh, people are afraid of uh, afraid um, of uh, making new things because mm -hmm. old things are just work. Uh, they purely work, but but they work and. Uh, no one can uh, accuse a physician or uh, some people from FDA that they do wrong things. Yeah. They do what uh, their fathers uh, did and, and all. 
if people die, they just say, yeah, this uh, disease uh, have no cure yet. Right. What, why you ask such a stupid question? Uh, but uh, if uh, the problem is if a uh, patient die from the disease, no one cares. But if patient uh, die from the emerg from the um, emerging technology that not uh, have been carefully tested, yeah. then then this is a headline. The um, researchers are under investigation. The physician under investigation. I think this is the wrong way to to work. We need a new new way of thinking about that. Uh, as Liz Parrish have said, uh, no, no risk, no gain. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I, I, uh, I, I saw. You know, you wrote that article a couple of years ago. It was, uh, it was called. It was actually a, you did it at Aubrey de Grey uh, interview, but you you entitled it "Wake Up, People! It's Time to Aim High." Yeah, and I yes. think it's a, um, it's an important message, and not to. Not to demean people that do, you know, there's this balance. Do we do the moonshot stuff? Yes, I believe. Do we put this other stuff on the shelf? The, I'm not a, and I'm, this is controversial, but I'm not a big fan of the metformins and all this stuff that, you know. It, it, I, I really can't understand. I really can't understand how, why, uh, why uh, people, uh, and you say in Europe, in uh, high-income countries, became such such a cowards. Yeah. Why, uh, especially researchers? Uh, you know, people in the USA, in the USA, so afraid of FDA. Uh, like uh, that, I I look at that uh, from the border, and I feel uh, like. It is not the USA and FDA, but USSR from 30, um, uh, 20th century and uh, K, K, uh, KGB. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, FDA like KGB. People are uh, yeah. so afraid of FDA, so, so afraid that FDA will ban them from the research that they uh, afraid to make new things in the clinic yeah. uh, and they forget that you say not only one country in the world that they make uh, their their experiments that they make clinical trials in another country uh, one of uh, by hackers juicy designer um, uh, have said that uh, there are at least 50 countries uh, where there is uh, non any medical regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, but people are still afraid. Uh, and I think uh, the, pr the problem is here. We, uh, in the lab, we have so much progress that uh, we can already cure many diseases or at least uh, stop the progression of them uh, but uh, in the clinic they will be uh, maybe in 10 years at best because uh, because of such a strong med uh, medical regulation and uh, the irony is that um, you say and other high-income countries uh, that uh, uh, have the ability to make these therapies and bring them to the clinic, they have the strongest medical regulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... For example, some, some countries have no medical regulation, but they have no researchers uh, which can make these therapies to the clinic. Yeah, it's so, going to be... So... So I, I think that um, medical tourism will play a huge role in coming years because I... uh, because it uh, there will be a tipping point when uh, people will uh, will ask uh, where where this therapy 
you say every day about uh, new breakthrough um, headlines says about uh, new drugs new biologics new bioengineering techniques but why why my grandpa still uh, slowly dying yeah. um, so i i believe that um, and uh, one another thing that I uh, don't say yet about uh, about uh, <clears throat> small molecules versus uh, versus um, uh, biologics is that biologics <clears throat> much cheaper to uh, cheaper to uh, make and cheaper to replicate uh, to make a small molecule you need a chemical line. Yeah. You need uh, you need a factory uh, with high pressure with uh, various uh, um, uh, reactivists, uh, which may be very poisonous. Um, but in biologics, you can do it in bacteria on your kitchen. Uh, so why why there are uh, biohackers? Uh, because of that. Of that, uh, uh, the because uh, biologics, because gene or enzyme or immune therapy can be easily replicated uh, even on a kitchen mm. using yeasts or bacteria or other things. Um, this is uh, this became uh, this become. Was, um, uh, cheap and cheap and cheap, uh, and uh, in the near future, uh, many people will be able to do it themselves, just from uh, download uh, uh, needed uh, DNA sequence, and uh, then uh, print that DNA sequence on their uh, kitchen <laughs> DNA. Uh, synthesizer <laughs> it's uh it's not that far off i just i don't know if you had a chance to uh watch the episode i did uh last week with uh uh dr uh, jeffrey ling he has a company called on demand pharmaceuticals and the uh although it's starting with small molecules it could be used for anything it basically the vision is one day you'll have a a device in your house that you know, whether it's small molecule biologic, uh, I don't know about 3D printing, but uh, be able to make what you need uh, without even leaving the house. So um, it's interesting times and the technologies are there. Uh, and it's a matter, as you said, uh, of having a little uh, less fear and, and um, investing. And, and uh, yeah, there's going to be something in between no regulations and, and, and total regulations. Uh, and it'll, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, it'll be part medical tourism. It'll be part other. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how it all comes out. And as you know, as you're doing, I mean, you've uh, I, I, it's why I was impressed with the interclear because, you know, you took the opportunity to to try <laughs> and do it with a team. And I think that's great. And I think there should be yeah. more more aerial finderman's uh, uh, saying, "Hey, you know, I'm not just going to sit around and read the articles. Uh, I'm going to set up a company and see if we can push this forward." So um, I take my hat off to you for that. Um, uh, for uh, any any uh, any last things that you want to say about uh, Intraclear or other plans you have, uh, anyone you want to shout yeah. out to? Uh, Please take the floor. Yeah, of course. Um, I would like to say that um, um, when we uh, have made our, when we establish our company, we uh, look at uh, as an example um, the company Oisen Biotechnologies. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know that company sure. and his chairman Gary Hudson. Uh, I we uh, make an interview with him uh, several years ago. And he is amazing, amazing man and very interesting uh, person. And I highly, highly uh, suggest you to invite him uh, in your program because 
his technology, uh, their technology is amazing. Uh, they uh, work on gene therapy, uh, uh, transient gene mm -hmm. therapy, uh, which is uh, based on lipid nanoparticles uh, and uh, use uh, the, the, more, the uh, interesting thing in their technology that they not just use um, uh, matrix RNA inside a lipid nanoparticle like we plan to do, but, but uh, they use a special uh, genetic switch to, so their nanoparticles will uh, work in one cells for example, cancer or senescent cells, and uh, we don't work in another cells, mm -hmm. in normal cells, for example. For example, you have a, a killing therapy, which um, gene which uh, uh, synthesize uh, such an enzyme as uh, caspase 9. This is a suicidal uh, enzyme, so called. Suicidal gene, gene um, which uh, make uh, which kill cells unconditionally. So uh, such a kind of therapy, of course, need a switch. So they will work in one type of cells, uh, which we need to kill, and don't work with uh, in another type of cells, in normal cells. Um, what about our company? Uh, our company is a so-called virtual company. So mm -hmm. we don't our own research, uh, research uh, facility yet, because, but we of course plan to make it uh, somewhere in the future. Uh, now we uh, uh, order our research in the universities or um, private labs we think that is uh, the most uh, cheap way uh, in enter um, uh, biotechnology market um, because uh, of course it's nice to make our own research facility sure. uh, so we may be a so-called uh, infrastructure company but uh, this has a problem that uh, this research facility is very expensive in uh, founding and very expensive in uh, uh, in working because we you need uh, personnel which will uh, work uh, full time in this uh, research facility and uh, the issue is that uh, we don't uh, need to um, uh, for example, uh, genetic engineer for all the process, or we don't need the chemist for all the process. Mm -hmm. Since our uh, since uh, making our therapy have several stages, and on each stage, uh, work uh, uh, researcher that are specialist in uh, in that stage. For example, chemists or bioengineer or physician or specialist in clinical trials and so on. And uh, we don't uh, need these people uh, at once. We need them one after one mm -hmm. after another. Uh, so we don't hire people for full time now. Uh, we uh, hire people. Uh, we, uh, sign a contract for some time for some work uh, and uh, these people usually from, from from the universities from the private labs or from the other companies for mm -hmm. example um, i think uh, for such a small and uh, uh, poor company <laughs> as our mm -hmm. without a big investor i think this is uh, the the best of, the best approach okay and and now i uh, will uh, uh, show you our presentation so you and our viewers will uh, 
Let's see. Okay, can you uh, see that? Yep. Yes, yes, okay. This is very important question, which we have to ask every morning. And uh, because not so lucky as us, and <laughs> each, each uh, day aging is the number one of killing. Mm. Aging kills uh, approximately one, uh, hundreds of thousand people every day mm -hmm. and we uh, order such a nice uh, picture uh, as you can see uh, what that means in the uh, population yep. the day uh, the week the month uh, the three months every, the year mm -hmm. the three and half a year entire Russia is uh, uh, die and every eight years all population of the USA will uh, would be die if all if they uh, will be all uh, old people mm -hmm. and aging is not just uh, the word aging is uh, all the aging pathologies that you can see this is all aging so when people try to distinguish between aging by itself uh, in the quarters and yeah. uh, aging pathologies it, it's uh, the wrong way uh, because all of them are part of aging all this is aging there is no such thing such a thing as aging itself all the things are aging. And this is uh, how much health spending is growing. Uh, yeah. and, and I can say more. Uh, 80 uh, or 90 per percent of uh, mm, uh, you say medical spending is uh, uh, spent by uh, it's spent on the uh, old people, people who uh, will die anyway and cannot uh, reinvest this money into economy. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why Aubrey de Grey and I and many other researchers think that uh, um, uh, rejuvenation therapies will be cheap because they will be pay for themselves because people who will be rejuvenated they will return this money into into the economy if you prolong health life by 20 or 30 years these people will work this 20 or 30 years and then you will again can uh, prolong the, uh, uh, their healthy years Mm -hmm. And again, they, they will return this money into the economy. So this, what is intracellular junk, mm -hmm. and uh, seven cholesterol. What is the problem and what is the solution? But applications we already took it. This is very interesting um, slide because this shows uh, how um, uh, profitable a rejuvenation therapist. This is amount of people over 60 years old. And in 2050, it will be 21 percent. Going up. This is age distribution of the population of Russia. This <laughs> is uh, from 30 to 60 years old. We, uh, 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 I uh, have to say that uh, we in intracellular biologics think that uh, rejuvenation uh, therapists, uh, the best year to uh, start them is uh, 30 years because this is uh, the years when uh, 
uh, people are already uh, adult and uh, they um, don't grow, so uh, their uh, virus uh, micro junk do not uh, dilute. Mm -hmm. uh, do not, do not dilute in there uh, when cells uh, divide. Mm -hmm. But it is not not so old uh, that uh, we need uh, something more uh, radical than usual rejuvenation by technology. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, 65 million people, and the number of people over 60 years old is uh, 30 million people. And this is age distribution of the population in high-income countries. Mm -hmm. You can see this is a very big numbers. This market estimation. Yeah. Uh, if uh, we will uh, make this uh, rejuvenation therapy to to break lipofuscin each five years, start, starting from age of thirty, and every two years starting from the age of sixty, and how we get this number? Uh, because uh, the example of something that already work is uh, and similar to other proposed therapy is so-called uh, lysosomal storage diseases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, you know about them. Yep. And uh, the, uh, these uh, numbers we get from them. We don't think that our therapy will be uh, much cost more expensive than uh, this therapies. And more important that in lysosomal storage diseases, they accumulate very aggressively and you need uh, every week or every month uh, these uh, infusions. But uh, lipofusin uh, in normal aging is accumulated very slowly. So one in several, one in infusion of such an enzymes or um, gene therapy, uh, one per several years is uh, more than enough. And if profit per course will be, uh, if profit per course is uh, $1,000, then we get these numbers mm. uh, from full, uh, audience coverage we will get only from Russia, not uh, not high income country, 28 billion dollars per, per year. And with only one tenth of a percent mm -hmm. coverage, we will still get 28 million per year in Russia, in not, uh, in not a high income country. And this is for high income countries, uh, the numbers are much more interesting. Yeah, they go up high. This is, this is uh, our d d development stages. Histological examination uh, that uh, we already uh, started. Mm -hmm. This is isolation and analysis on lipofuscin, which we already uh, write a research plan and uh, look for investor precisely for this stage. Mm. We think that um, uh, investigating of the structure of lipofuscin is very important because um, there are so much, uh, so many questions unanswered about yep. lipofuscin that um, we need to answer them. And one of these questions is uh, the structure of lipofuscin and whether lipofuscin is uh, the, the same in all tissues or different in the, in uh, various tissues. And yep. if if it different, whether is because it uh, different uh, because it consists of uh, completely another parts mm -hmm. or components, or because it consists of the same components but in uh, high-level co components. Right. But uh, but uh, 
a difference in their um, ratio in between these components. Mm -hmm. um, and investigating of the structure of lipofacin is also uh, needed for uh, looking uh, for looking enzymes uh, uh, in uh, bacteria, mm -hmm. because if we don't know the structure, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, design the bacteria that uh, will um, we cannot design the bacteria strain to uh, looking for enzymes. Of course, we can make uh, something like. Uh, uh, Big screening, something like uh, screening for such enzymes, but I personally think that this is not very effective. Mm. I think that uh, precisely designing uh, the bacterial strain for looking for such an enzymes, like Arevo Pharmaceuticals uh, have done, is the, the best way. Um, David Spiegel from the Yale, Yale University, who now uh, works in uh, Arrival Pharmaceuticals, have done amazing work uh, in this area. So we wish to replicate their um, success in uh, lipofusin, with uh, lipofusin. Mm -hmm. Then after we investigate, uh, isolate and investigate the structure of lipofusin, we will be able to synthesize this lipofusin in uh, needed amount for research, for looking um, for bacterial. We can uh, synthesize them either uh, chemically or biologically. Then uh, express test development. Uh, this uh, is a chemical express test. Uh, but uh, now we think that we may uh, we may leave uh, these stages because of uh, lipofacin is so-called autofluorescent compound, which uh, under fluorescent microscopy and spectroscopy uh, have uh, very um, have a known uh, zanche. So. Um, we can use uh, fluorescent microscopy and uh, spectroscopy to uh, uh, test how much uh, lipofusin in uh, a cell uh, and even uh, to uh, investigate uh, the, we cannot uh, investigate the structure of lipofusin using uh, uh, it's out of fluorescent um, nature, but uh, we can uh, compare the profusin from different tissues uh, and we can see is the same picture of, uh, is the same spectra or different spectra. Mm. And thus we can uh, realize uh, the same uh, lipofusin is the same in various tissues or different. So um, things are going very um, interesting. Then enzyme search and then um, gene therapy development, then development of the therapy, clinical trials uh, on animals, or, uh, and uh, yep. trials, and and then and then yes, uh, clinical trials and uh, translational uh, research uh, to uh, there. Uh, what you, what is the main, uh, what is the main uh, obstacle that can be uh, at this stage? Uh, sure. Uh, this is uh, an immune reaction on these foreign enzymes. Um, of course, uh, there are various solutions to uh, get around uh, that. Uh, so uh, one of them is uh, mod modify it, uh, these enzymes so they will be as effective as uh, previous, but will not uh, make uh, an immune, uh, immune reaction mm -hmm. from the human organism. Or uh, my uh, favorite way is use gene therapy. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a matrix RNA, which less, which if uh, prepared uh, specially, uh, will uh, not uh, result in immune reaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is our team mm -hmm. and advisory board. I wish to note Ilya Mazunin, this is our chief technology officer. Uh, he is a uh, very clever person who works on uh, uh, mitochondrial version of the, of the CRISPR. Uh, one of the few people in the world who do such amazing stuff. Uh, so this is our advisory board and mm -hmm. uh, uh, all known people for you, of course. <laughs> yeah, know them all. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, soon we will get invited. Uh, we will invite um, more people in our team and uh, in our advisory board. So uh, we will need all uh, for beginning of the um, main stage of the research, the investigating the structure of lipofacine. All we need is uh, money, all we need is an investor or angel investor who will understand all the risks and uh, will uh, try our risks and our success with us. Well, we hope to help you get the word out. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good message. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through that. Um, you definitely have a well thought out plan. Um, have a lot of work ahead of you, but uh, you clearly have thought through things and, uh, you know, wishing you the best, uh, like all companies in this area now, especially in this environment. So um, I want to thank you for coming on the show to talk to us and share your ideas and share your company and, and everything that you're planning. Uh, it was it was a really interesting time. And um, for everybody that's going to be uh, listening to this podcast or watching uh, here on the YouTube channel, uh, you've been listening to Ariel Feinerman, Chief Science Officer, Intraclear Biologics, uh, next generation bioengineering company looking to put aging under medical control. Uh, and really, uh, Ariel, thank you for, for taking the time out of your schedule. I know it's late there. Uh, thank you for what you're doing in the longevity aging space. And as we say, thank you for uh, trying to create a better tomorrow, especially on the healthy longevity front. Uh, it's been a really nice time. Thank you very much for your time, for your patience, for your patience and uh, I hope that we will reach longevity scale velocity very soon. Us too. So, so, <laughs> so as I like to say, see you on Mars. <laughs> <laughs>